So what are you doing, Nicholas? So we're replicating an experiment from uh, Mizuno, a Japanese uh, researcher. Can we have a look at the book, please? Tadaiko oh. Mizuno. That's that's the main man. He's yeah. got a picture of him on the back, hasn't it? Yes, I There's Mr. Mizuno. So this is the guy that it invented this kind of process, which protocol that we're replicating here, which uh, they've done. Uh, a lot of in Italy recently. So it's an electrolytic uh, cell. Basically you start by doing electrolysis of uh, an electrolyte. The electrolyte is just water with uh, uh, potassium carbonate. And uh, basically you create hydrogen and oxygen by putting a DC current in the electrode. What are you using to put the DC current into it's, the electrode? Uh, we're using uh, the, the AC power and then there's a variable uh, a variable um, transformer so where you can change the, the voltage. You call that a variac, yeah? It's, it's called a variac. And then we're rectifying with this box, we're rectifying the alternative current going out of this box into DC current. And we're measuring the voltage, we're at 170 volt, we're uh, 700 milliamps going in. So the first phase of the experiment is doing electrolysis. The second phase is igniting the, the hydrogen. So we're burning the hydrogen on the chemi chemical uh, reaction. And then we will create a plasma. And this plasma is not supposed to be uh, chemical. So we'll see mm. later, later. We have to start slowly. What happened yesterday? We went too fast and we burned <laughs> the fuse of the variac. So uh, you got just, just just got some bigger fuses, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll do a little slower. There you go. Slower. So uh, we've got about 30 fuses in there uh, that we can use, so we should, should be alright. Keep it really, real slow there. Give it some love. So what the temperature is about 90 degrees is it? Yeah. Just under 90 degrees. There you go. Break it down. Yeah, it's starting to become white. And the uh, current is dropping, so that's interesting. So that's normal and, and uh, you just have to wait until it's stabilized. So whilst that's stabilizing, can you describe the things that you've used to construct this cell? So basically, it's um, the main electrode is a tungsten rod used to do uh, welding. Then there's a <laughs> insulation. It's a uh, little uh, beads of ceramic uh, all along the the, the rod of, uh, of tungsten to insulate it. Then there's a, a tube of glass, and at the end there's a, a ceramic from a fuse that um, shield the, the, the insulate the electricity, so it can only <laughs> go from the tip of the, the the electrode to the other electrode, which is in, a, in stainless steel. It's a mesh of stainless steel. So temperature is slowly increasing.
what is this little device, the white thing we got over here? It's a gamma, uh, it's a Geiger Miller counter. So it's counting uh, alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. And we're way, way below background. So, so actually, it, it's, we're in a gamma shield at the moment. <coughs> I mean, the building is probably a good shield, and we are not getting anything. No counts. So, 91 degree. Let's try a little more voltage. So, we're only putting less than 200 watts. So. It's a, it's a very, very small vacuum for your apartment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not even a heater. Temperature is still rising, 91.5, around 93, which I think it should be interesting. <coughs> so this is uh, necessary to control the, the reaction and react fast. If if it becomes instable and we have too much bubbles, uh, steam bubbles forming, and it, it can break the glass. So it's quite a fine uh, level of adjustment you have to use here to, yeah, to keep the balance between the potential for the plasma to form and the hydro hydrogen bubbles forming and then you know, breaking that potential. Okay, so we're about 92.7 degrees, 92.8, so it's creeping up there. Yeah, 3,500 degrees around. So Nicholas, are we seeing a plasma there? What are, what are we seeing there? Yeah, we're seeing the plasma. The, the white thing is a uh, is plasma spark. And uh, for people that don't know what a plasma is, it's a plasma of what? It's a uh, state of matter. It's uh, matter can be solid, liquid, or gaseous, and then uh, it can be a plasma where. And the, the atoms, I guess, I guess you still have molecules, mm -hmm. like oxygen is O2, hydrogen is H2, and here in the plasma you break the molecule and you have only monoatomic uh, elements. So, so are you hydrogen is transformed into H and not H2, and oxygen is transformed into O and not O2. And are you suggesting that uh, there's any tungsten plasma in there, or are we just talking hydrogen and oxygen? No, I guess hydrogen and oxygen. 
are probably vaporizing part of the text then because it's relatively high temperature. At some area, we are above uh, 4,000 degrees. With so the change in color inside your electrolytes. So it's definitely above the fusion temperature of um, Melting of temp melting temperature of which is just a just a little over three and a half thousand degrees. Yes, but then vapor temperature, I think it's five thousand degrees. So how hot could water get if it was, uh, you know, formed? I mean, how how hot could hydrogen get when it's burning? You know, if it was chemically burning. I don't know. Actually, you have a bombardment of uh, uh, ions and uh, every particle that is inside the inside the electrolyte. It's bombarding because it's attracted by, um, I mean, um, I, uh, anion are attracted by the anode, so it, it just falls on the anode. Um, it falls on the cathode, sorry. And uh, the, the speed makes, uh, makes interesting stuff happening also. So what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say though is with the energy that you could release from, for instance, burning hydrogen and oxygen chemically, like just the oxidation process to water, would that be sufficient, able to get to a sufficient temperature to melt tungsten? No. No. The density is not, uh, is not sufficient. You would need uh, way more power and, uh, and a bigger surface. So you, you keep fiddling with this Variac here, why, why are you doing that? I'm trying to see what happens if I'm increasing a little bit the uh, voltage. Without increasing the current, I'm looking at the current. So you have current spike, so sometimes you're below 1 amp, sometimes you're over 2. What but do you think is causing that? It's the conductivity between the two electrodes depends if, if there is the electrolyte, depends if there's the gas, depends of the ion that are in the gas. So the conductivity, the, the resistivity between the two electrodes is changing all the time because it's um, it's unstable. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, activity due, due to steam mainly. It's too dense to be stable. And due to the plasma, you have explosion actually. You have So we're not attempting any any sort of assessment of excess heat up here, are we? We're just well, not measuring, but other people have measured typically um, an excess heat of 100% uh, excess, so factor two. So if you put 100 watt in the system, they are getting 200 watt. And now, how are they doing that with? Flow they're, calorimetry or? No, the, the simplest system is to measure the amount of water that is tr transformed into steam. Okay. And you, we know the, the energy that is needed to transform 100 degree uh, liquid water into 100 degree steam. Mm -hmm. And uh, you calculate basically the mass of, of water that has been transformed to steam. And, uh, in a certain amount of time, just by waiting the cell before <coughs> and during the experiment and after the experiment. <coughs> so we'll try a little higher voltage and we will stop here. It's quite confusing, but we're starting to lack, not have enough water. So yeah, that little parabolic shadow you can see on the right hand side there is one of the electrodes that's made of a steel mesh, stainless steel mesh. And the one that's uh, 
where all the activity seems to be spawning from so let's is the tungsten electrode. Let's try something. We will shall reduce the voltage. Everything will become very quiet. So it can be that's the interesting thing of this experiment is you can stop it, shut it down in a few seconds. It's not like a nuclear reactor where you have an avalanche uh, system and you cannot shut it down. You need the cool cooling it by um, using uh, cold water to cool the, um, the heart of the, of the reactor. Here, it stopped. Where I, uh, no activity anymore, it's dead. And then I can increase the voltage. And slowly so when it's yellow, are you saying that that's effectively this recombination of Hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah, this is burning. Just, just burning hydrogen then. Exactly. But then when it goes to the white phase, the kind of like really bright white flashes, that's when something really interesting is happening. Thank <laughs> you.